and sold. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, you join myself, Angus, and this 1976 Oldsmobile 98 somewhere in a bean field in the middle of North Iowa. This thing has sat for 25 years. We're gonna haul it home in a snatch and grab operation and see if we can get it running once again. Let's get started. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> Angus, what the hell is in front of us today? That's a really good question. Uh, a lot of car. A lot of car. Like I said, this is a 1976 Oldsmobile 98, which stands for 98 feet long. Yeah, really. 98 foot long. It has supposedly a big block 455, which I would believe probably about the only thing to move it down the road. And also supposedly very low miles, which I would also believe because this thing is in excellent shape. I mean, look at the paint. It looks great. <laughs> a bubble bath will do excellent. The, the protectant is still on this piece of trim at the top of the hood and it's not even that yellowed. The vinyl top, I didn't even notice it had because it's not bubbled, they're all screwed up, is in beautiful shape. And the interior, ho, 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 let me tell you about the interior. That right there, folks, is the epitome of elegance and class. Luxury in an Oldsmobile. Look at this bottle. Real velour. That's real Dr. Pepper. They use real peppers. Oh, it gets better. Hang on. That's real Diet Mountain Dew with a real diet probably when Diet Mountain Dew came out. It probably is. None of that's important right now. What is important is what's under the hood. Something bad happened to this car. Oh yeah, it is. It was a perfect body, but I guess someone backed into the fender here with the tractor. And other than that, it is like perfectly straight. There we go. I've lifted. Look that is at that. Big. I think they only came, yeah, 455. They only came with a big block in these cars. This is signs of mice. Are there any plug wires or anything left in the car? Uh, yeah, but they're, oh my they're, God, they're gone. Really, they're <laughs> multiplied is what happened here. That's, they were, they're cut clean off. There's eight inches missing on every wire. Well, that's the problem. You got too many of them. Oh, God, they got into the harness, oh, too. Yeah. And here. Okay, well, this is a problem. Well, we could stand here all day and blab about this thing, or we could get on the trailer and head south and see if it runs. How about that? Let's do it. Yeah. You know, this thing looks just like that Delta 88 we had years ago, but just huge. Well, that's that's where that extra 10 comes in. Oh. <laughs> all right, where she goes. Oh, would you like to steer, sir? I would love to. Woo, it's stinky. <laughs> You know, he can't even get out the rear doors either. No, he can't. Help me. This has electric windows and will die. Oh, it does? <laughs> it's got electric windows. Oh. I've never even ran into that problem before. <laughs> well, choose you know. your least favorite. Can you get through this? This Maybe. is your best bet. To the back seat. <laughs> well, I don't, do we have a booster pack to put the window down? I don't think we do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Angus. Goodbye. <laughs> What the hell are you wearing? I don't know. <laughs> Ow. How do you like this? I'm fun. You're immune to those. <laughs> there we go. First time in 847 years, the car is leaving the property. Seven was put in work. It's still the quickest that car's probably ever accelerated. <laughs> All right, hour south. Let's get it done. That was horrifying. That was so sketchy. <laughs> is that a trailer tire? Probably. Yes, it is. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go home now. Do we have a spare? 
We do. Look at that trunk. And a jack. Look at that jack. <laughs> look at that extra pedal cover. Um, also, look how clean this look is. Look at that paint. I know. That's uh, We said this on the diesel Buick that one time. <laughs> it turned out to be just a car. <laughs> we literally buffed it and got uglier. Yeah. Because it was like, this thing's really clean. And then you buff it and it's like, Insane. this shiny oh. car is kind of rusty. Oh. That's okay. Yeah. That's what we have a Ben Pack brake lathe for. And that's why we ordered brand new $20 calipers from O'Reilly's. We're taking it right now. Yeah, that pit stop just cost us the race, Kevin. It's working! No, the jack! Ta-da! All right, now for Angus's favorite time, sudsy bubble bath time. No! <laughs> no baths! Oh, dude, this is going to come out great. You know, the sad thing is that fender was probably just fine and got hit there, and then someone caught it with the door and just yanked the door open. And the door is what, someone opened the door is what ruined the fender, so that sucks. Oh, I didn't bring my speaker. Jesse, you got to sing the car wash song. Fucking met the car wash! Not even that much staining in it. Like there's just that. Remember, this is 1976. 50 year old thing. Just fine. All right, we're gonna keep scrubbing. We'll be back when she's done. God damn. That might be the cleanest revival car we've ever come across. Period. Now it looks like a clean demolition derby car, but it's <laughs> it's pretty good. Now don't get me wrong. It does need buff really bad. You can you can hear it. A lot of oxidization in the paint and crap, but for just scrubbing this with a couple shop towels, this came out incredible. We say we push it inside and see if it runs. All right, you're pushing. I bet this AC works. This thing's, oh, there's no way. This 25 years. Perfect though. Check this out. We've got bicentennial, you know, 1976, America flag. Right behind that, the original valve sim caps and the build sheet. This came from Clarion. It actually was right down the road from Eagle Grove where we got this car. Came from about 15 miles from where I grew up. It's only been turned on for 30 seconds. Boop! <laughs> the mirror works. <laughs> of course it does. This car's like new. <laughs> Dash, the headliner. We didn't even show the headliner. The headliner. This is like... You have a you have an armrest back there? Check out how this thing actually like hinges up. And forward. This one also folds up and back. This might be the nicest vinyl top. I've seen in my life. Oh. Oh. Yes. I guess we might want to backpedal a little bit and get the shot back, actually. We've got, there's an eaten off line. We pointed out earlier a bunch of eaten wires. Um, all the wiper washer lines are gone entirely. Mm. Is there a carburetor move? No, it's bolted to the engine, Kevin. Oh, shit. Well, we're good. It works. Thanks, Angus. Well, let's get the vacuum in there and clean some of that up. What? This because stuff? That's, that's, that's good proof that it has been sitting for a while. Anybody doubted it. <laughs> These cars weren't in style until just now. Hmm. Angus is currently digging into some of the main wires on the back there, see what they run to. Yeah. I am going to switch this over to the top post. Uh, as you can see, our engine cleaned up pretty nice. It's pretty, pretty okay in there. Hey, is the AC pump turn? That, since that's priority. Yeah, well, yeah, but, uh, if we're gonna have, Ooh. If, if this thing is so luxurious, we have to have AC. Yeah. It do be spinning. Sweet. It's like I own one of these. Where is it? Looks good. Perfectly full. And now it's time to check if we have spark. <laughs> I'll hit the key. <laughs> well, I found some side post adapters and got lazy and put those on instead. I got nothing on the lock switch. Nothing on the windows? Nope. It must be one of these large wires that we're eating through. Oh no. All right, I've got my test light. Obviously going from a tested ground source. We have power at the battery. From here, GM will run a fat cable all the way down to the starter. From that connection point for this cable, they will run a Another large, not nearly this large, but a large, normal wiring size 
cable off that same connection point and that will inject power into our harness. So as you can see, we've got power into the main harness at least there. Surprisingly, with the amount of mouse damage like in the hood, no real sign of mice present in the car. Thank God. So one of these that are not the power coming to this post and not the alternator is gonna be the one that goes into our harness, I believe. I bet it's this fusible link right here that you saw, Angus. Go see if you got any life in the car now. All right. Oh, whoa, we got courtesy lights and everything. Let's see, door locks. Locked, un no, no, locked, unlocked. Yay! Yeah, it's, it's the fusible link wire. Oh, that'll do it. You got our connection fixed. How's it looking? Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's annoying. What the hell? Oh, sweet. They're slowly but surely coming to life. Yeah, does the radio work? Oh, uh, the antenna does. Wait, it's on local. Distance, please. Yeah, set the antenna to distance. Look at that. That's glorious. Rising like an American flag. One speaker works. Oh, oh, dude, hang on. The horn, does the horn work? Yes, it's not as exuberant as the Delta, the Delta 88 we had is. Might need to warm up. Driving lights. Hey, low beams. High beams. Let's see, uh, rear driving lights. Even, even both license plate lights work. Oh, hell yes. Nicest car we've ever owned, right here. Big moment of truth. Hit it. Okay. <laughs> Do it one more time. <laughs> You've got spark. <laughs> All right, well, she spins. Let's get plug wires on it. Okay, so, first of all, what the hell? Um, <laughs> look at the gap on that plug. That's funny. That's better. <laughs> when it comes to an engine where you have lost track of the number one plug wire on the cap, here's how you set that. There's two times that your piston is going to be at the top of your cylinder, at top dead center. One of those times is going to be a compression stroke, and the other one is going to be an exhaust stroke. So the first thing you need to do is pull that number one spark plug, stick your finger on the hole, and have your buddy crank the motor over slow by hand or just bump the starter and feel for it to pssst against your finger and you know that is the compression stroke. You're gonna know when there's 130, hopefully, 130 psi on the other side of your finger because it's gonna lift your finger off the hole. That is going to be your compression stroke. At that point, you need to bring the piston all the way to the top and the way to do that is with this right here. Right down here, as you can see, we've crawled under the car and got a wire brush and cleaned up our harmonic balancer. On the GMs, you can see that little sawtooth piece is the timing tab itself that has degrees marked on it. And the single line on the harmonic is top dead center on the harmonic. So you're gonna line that sucker up with zero, and then you're gonna take your cap off and see where your rotor is pointing. Now remember, this is why we need to verify that we're on the compression stroke, because there's two times that mark is gonna line up with zero, and one of those is top dead center on the exhaust, and you're 180 out. The reason that happens is because the crank will do two rotations in the time it takes the camshaft will do one. So top to center, top to center, and this will do a whole circle. So we verified we're on the compression stroke. We verified we're set to top dead center. We are going to look at the location of this rotor and where it lands on one of these eight posts. It could be any eight posts depending on where the distributor is. I could have this one be one. I could have this one be one. I could have this one be one. I'm gonna give myself some wiggle room because as you can see I hit there. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna say that this guy right here is our number one. At this point, I'll tighten this down a little bit so it doesn't move when we fire it up. We'll go one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two with our plug wires, and this should light right off. Let's make it happen. All right, our return line was leaking, so that's off. Our main line from the carburetor is plumbed into a little bucket over there, so we can't run long because it'll fill up fast. Go for it, sir. Oh, yes. Cover me, I'm reloading. Go for it. Kill it. Fuel. Oh, man. 
Fuel pump works incredible. Dude, that might not be terrible, actually. I bet we could probably get away with hooking that back up. It doesn't smell that bad. It's probably non-ethanol, thank God. All right, Oldsmobile running on original fuel system attempt one. Hit it. <laughs> Oh, there's a million vacuum leaks I forgot about. Oh, uh, that'll do it. Yeah, uh, get the vacuum caps out. Hang on, never mind. Let's try this again. <laughs> Alright, 87 vacuum plugs later. Hit it, Angus. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> right in the line. I'm sure it needs plugs, looking at how that one was gapped. It's, it was very lazy, and I think the distributor had rotated on me because I reached back and gave it a crank and then it revved a lot better. Mm. But at first it was just like, Bleh. Now what? We're done! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Mr. Gus. Uh, well, they're ugly, but other than that, it looks okay. Like the pads have plenty of life on them. Well, we got new ones, so actually they're worn down further than I thought. They're past the champers on the edges. All right. Oh, this is most of my concern. That's going to be zero breaking power. So you just strip these off, change our hoses, change our pads. So we got new calipers. They're 20 bucks. Might as well. We'll turn these on the rotor and get everything cleaned up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'll do that side. Okay. Definitely no one been in here before. It's factory GM 1976 grease. And this is why I say after you run them for a little bit, then you come back here and reset your preload, because that right there is where it was. It pushes the grease out of the wheel bearings. Remember kids, you can always use your hands as a hammer. That's what my safety coordinator at work always says. Angus, if you had any quote, it would be you could always use a hammer as your hands. Fine, then you aren't allowed to borrow my hands anymore. You, you can't say that. Not uh, family tale. Oh no. Okay, that's, that's not what I meant. I'll just get the caliper off is all. And then we'll be able to fully pull our rotors off and Kevin can start turning those on the brake lathe. Get, get. What if I said please? Here, try this one. It's like stuck on my back. More so than the front. Heck. There you go. There. That's just less to have to turn later. Perfect. Which That's is actually thing. like now. Sweet. Get the wheel bearings out the back of these, throw them on the lathe, and get them cleaned up. Yeehaw. Okay. All right. Oh. So, we got some dirt. Dirt going on. But, uh, other than that, everything else looks pretty well clean in here. Springs are all there. Everything's fine. Wheel cylinder's not even leaking yet. We'll pop these apart just enough to get the wheel cylinder off, clean up our star wheel here, and, uh, that'll be that, because it's... Practically brand new ish. Now, in the past, I believe it was the Mustang 2 video we did, I said that we couldn't turn the rotors because they did not fit on our Ben Pack Ranger brake lathe. Acting upon a hunch that there's no way in hell they'd make that nice big fancy machine and not let you do regular 
rotors from cars this large. I did a little reading in the manual, and sure enough, there is a better way to do it, the correct way. Mr. Wolf Spider, you're going to want to... Not that I really want you in the shop, but I really don't want you flying in my face. He is chilling. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he came at me with the pressure. I'll show you now! So what you got to do is take off this speed adapter and then use these funny conical shaped adapters I've obviously wondered what they were for. And now I know. Take those off so you have a much smaller arbor. Put your disc in. Or sorry, put your rotor in. Put another double sided adapter on. Throw on your spacer. And I'm just going to throw the nut on backwards because it fits better this way. And then give this guy a little spin as he tightens down. Make sure he lands where he's supposed to. There we go. Tighten this up. Throw the silence band on. Keeps it from doing that annoying screaming you hear in the back of a Riley sometimes. Fire this sucker up. Unlock your cutting heads. Roll them forward. And do a quick test to see if we got a really warped rotor or if I need to play with it a little more. I think I need to play with it a little more. back and forth. It either means that I'm not straight on the machine or we have a warp rotor. Could be either really. I'll give this a couple more tries until I get that to minimize the chirping. That's four tries now and it's still doing the same thing. These gotta be warped I guess. This machine's never done me wrong. Benpack makes one hell of a product. 4,000 spinner, 4,000 here, set my feed, let it rip, tighten down our armor and let it rip. Let our first pass run through to take off all the high spots. Then I'll go for a second pass to really make a nice clean cut and you won't hear that chirping anymore. Like I said, this Benpack produced Ranger uh, precision combination brake blade is awesome. The arbor on this thing is huge. It has a huge arsenal of adapters and stuff that you can get for it. It can do flywheels. Uh, composite rotors, hub, hubless, brake drums, all of it. This thing is great, and of course, as always, a huge thanks to Benpack. There we go. Let's take a look at it. Here's our first pass. You can see where the pad was sitting still. There's a bit of rust right there, so I gotta get deep to get rid of that. It's mostly straight right now, but. Oh boy. This side's seen better days. Yeah, we're going to have to take off a few more thou. Nice and clean. You can hear it cutting even on both sides now. Oh, yeah, shit. I had a little more rust on that one. This side looks good. This side... Uh, this side still has some pitting. Which is crazy, because that's a uh, that's ninety thousandths that I'm digging into that. So I guess yeah, I'll bump her up to like eleven on the inside face. One more pass, then we can clean bearings and put them back on the car. Goodbye, giant rust punks. That'll do her. Eleven thou is all she needed. How are things back here? Everything's on fire. Life is a nightmare. Oh, no, oh. <laughs> got one new wheel cylinder started. Uh, lines put on, just trying to get the second bolt in. A lot of rust under here, really, for a low mile car. The only rusted out thing on this whole car really is right here and the exhaust. Yeah, the exhaust is gone, but I mean like the axle and everything, but... This is paint. Yeah, that's damn good. Probably lived on gravel and probably saw winters, yeah. but not many of them. Oh wait, there's literally skirts on this car. What am I doing? That's <laughs> one of the tricks I've learned is even if the car is a bit of a piece of shit, but the wheel wells are really black. It looks pretty good. Literally all I'm doing right now, I guess, is just rust prevention. Further rust prevention. All done? All done. We got both sides 
Got the wheel cylinders replaced, springs are back on. I have yeah. undercoating on my arm. This car is too nice. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Science and math. I think we're done in the back. Yay. Yeah, because I'm sure we'll never have to be back in here again to fix anything ever. Tank with a wet spot. No. <laughs> 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 nah, it's not that bad. There we go. Next step in the process. Clean up the bearings, wheel seals. Put all the old parts back in because, you know, they're fine. Whatever. Saves money. They've only done 30,000 miles. Yeah. Time for the grease gun. All right. Bearings are all cleaned up, greased up. I got a big old freaking huge glob of grease down in there. Remember kids, grease is cheap and wheel bearings are also pretty cheap, but 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 time is expensive. And that's that's really what we're trying to save here is having to do this a second or third time. No. Come here, Jesse. No. Come here. This is my nice shop shirt. Put her there. That's how you make a deal. See? Come on. Jesse, your turn. <laughs> yep, I knew that was coming. <laughs> you want a perfectly clean or as Realistically close as you can get the one a perfectly clean uh, surface for that pad to embed into and Even after being turned there's a bunch of crap on there. So yeah, let's clean that off and ta -da, There we go. All right uh, Where's my seal driver? There it is See what you want about reusing those seals, but they look just fine. The bearings did too. New grease. What have we bought? Like 200 bucks in parts so far, maybe? I don't know. Probably not even, really. Calipers, uh, pads, and wheel cylinders. And those were cheap, so I think we can have this whole car said and done for a grand. To include the cost, which was like 800 bucks, so. What about tires? Oh shit, I forgot about tires. All right, whole car for two grand. <laughs> There we go. That looks a lot better. Do do do. I cheated. I used the grease buddy thing today. I don't know. Sometimes I just don't feel like packing bearings by hand, you know? Oh god. Alright, and now I just put this right there. Don't worry about there being a bunch of grease on the back side. That's good. That's what you want. Grease everywhere. It lasts forever. Bearing in, washer on, my retaining nut. There's a bunch of different schools of thought on uh, preload for these. And you can hop on the internet and figure out which one you want to use. And there is generally a torque specification you can use, but I usually go about there, you know? You guys felt how tight that was, right? But no, I, I go until I can feel it just drag the uh, the rotor there we go and then like I said earlier give it a bunch of rotations both ways this is what this is gonna do is work that grease out of the bearings which is going to happen anyway so you might as well do it now while well, you can still get to this bolt and then there's that last little bit now with that being said Obviously, you have to get a cotter pin in here. Move to your closest castellation. And if it's good enough for Jim, it's good enough for us. Down she goes. And that's how you do a brake job with the pliers. Being too tight on the preload is, would you say, is the more concerning thing? Yeah. Because you're going to burn them up without knowing. Yep. Kill bearings. Too loose, you can lift the car up in 50 miles or 100 miles. If the tire wiggles a little, or you hit a little tuk 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 tuk, tighten that a little more. Then you know you have to just vlog it for next time, a little more. We'll put our cap on. You can throw some grease in here if you want. Seeing that this one was completely dry from the factory, I guess it doesn't matter that much to be out here. It is behind the washer, so it's not going to do a ton. This is mostly just to keep the dust out. Thank you. With that, our wheel bearings are done, our rotor's turned, now we simply bolt on a new caliper with new pads and a new brake hose, and that's it. Simple. Science. Science. Available now at your local science store.
All right, life lessons and being cheap. Today's like the opposite of normal junkyard days where we usually replace everything. Well, here's how to do a car for nothing. If your brake hoses look good on the outside, that means the outside's good. On top of that, if you take them off and you start getting drips from the brake hose, not this one, from the caliper, but your brake hoses start gravity bleeding, that means they flow. And this is actually a tip for anything ever, but you're like doing a brake job and you don't see this happening at a lesser extent while you're swapping calipers or wheel cylinders. That rubber line upstream is junk and it's swollen internally. So that right there tells me that if fluid can freely flow through this hose with just the force of gravity, we have good hoses up front. So we don't actually need to change them. And these ones, like I said, look so good on the outside. I'm not even worried about them. So let's get new calipers on this thing. Got some new calipers, 21 bucks a pop, easy decision. Got some brake pads left over from Mook's Cutlass. These are power stops. I absolutely love power stops. These are specifically the Z23s. They don't make a bad one. If you want to buy the cheaper one, the more expensive one, whatever. They're all available from Rock Auto. And Summit Racing, I believe, holds them or carries them too. I absolutely love these. I've been running these since I was about 16 years old, and I've never had a single pad ever scream or perform poorly. And that is big. And these might seem, with, with like the packaging and the quality they are, they might seem like a high dollar product, but no, these are like the rival parts stores brand uh, pad prices. These are awesome. So definitely hop on Rock Auto, get yourself a set of those for your car. You will not be disappointed. Angus is throwing some anti-seize on our slide surfaces where these edges slide. And then we'll get that sucker assembled and get it in the car. <laughs> some meaty slap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, smack it. <laughs> Mook's not here, I gotta make the gremlin noises. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a famous Mook noise. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mook. We've never ooh, once explained what the fuck? Giuseppe! You heck ass. Meanwhile, what are you doing? I'm cleaning the interior. It's actually yeah. cleaning up really nice. Jesus, All the more yeah, is no, the steering all. wheel. It's perfect. There's not a crack in it. This little insert in the door wasn't supposed to come out, but in taking it out, you broke it. I discovered how modern this car is. It's got no, phone holders. No way. Oh. Oh. Well, it's got one. It has one. Yeah, for the guy that, you know, can be on his phone. Well, there we go. Everything down there is done. Angus is actively fighting the lines. I got one Don't so break far. The other one. Wow, look how clean these are. They're, they're like brand new. They're like brand new. Anyway, Angus is going to get the old master off. I've got a new one here, which is also left over from that 72 Olds. So I'm going to throw this in the bench vise and we'll bleed it. So for bleeding a master cylinder, you're going to need, well, believe it or not, a master cylinder, a bench vise, some brake fluid, and you can get one of those cheap dinky bleeding kits or do this. And I have found this to work way better. It's the clear rubber tube half of the cheap pinky bleeding kit, but then I've got little one inch pieces of brake line with some random adapters. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put that right there and these in here just like this. Ta-da, okay. What I'm going to be doing is watching right there for bubbles. And you can see one right now. If you look in that, that first hole, the one towards the bottom of the screen, there's a shiny little dot that is a bubble. Same thing for this guy back here. Can't see this one quite as well because of the lighting I'm in right now for the camera's sake, but there's a bubble there. We're gonna give this a couple full pumps. And then we're gonna do just the first half inch, compress it all the way once the bubbles stop out that reservoir and do the last half inch. And that is the fastest way to bleed one of these with the least amount of effort. That's also what I found to be the most effective way of bleeding one of these. You gotta really make sure this is in here so you don't, you know, get mostly done and then send it across the shop. First couple pumps are gonna be dry. This is to get the, the seals wet. Oh, this is a nice heavy one, fun. So, already you can see just that little movement. See the amount of bubbles coming out of that back reservoir? If you watch that hole right there, yep, perfect. You can see the little shininess of a bubble still in there. And remember, I'm only moving this much, and that's making bubbles over there. So very, very, like just, just pretty much flexing my hand, the pressure of my palm, just enough, and every pump, 
from getting a bubble. So I'm going to do that for a long time and then I'm going to go all the way in and I'm going to just do the back half and that's going to get the bubbles out of this guy back here. The bubbles will stop before you're done bleeding. You have to look down in that hole to see the shiny little orb of a bubble and once it's just a black void and you do a few full strokes and it stays a black void you are absolutely done bleeding at that point if you don't do it like that i don't know how many times i've done it the old way where just pump it a bunch until the bubbles stop coming out of these hoses and you throw it on the car and you have just terrible breaks because there's still air in this part of the master so just small strokes until all the shiny bits down in the hole are gone here here actually see that rear hole right now See how dark that is? There's no shiny little bubble down in there. I'll, I'll see if I can get one to pop back into it. That's what it's supposed to look like when it's done. There. No, oh, shit, I had one for a second. There, bingo. That's what it looks like when there's a bubble in it. I need it to come back. I know there's a bubble in there. I just saw it. Oh, there he yep, is. There he is. Not actually fully bled. So, just work it a little. Might have, that might be a, yeah, that one I gotta go to the back half of the stroke to get those out. There they go. Look at that. And if you come all the way out, again, still not a bubble coming out of that hose, but they are just flowing out of that cylinder. So, just keep that up till all four holes, see absolutely no bubbles, and you will truly have a perfectly, correctly bled master. All right, I'll finish this up and we'll get this sucker bolted on. All right, I am actively putting on our new master cylinder. Angus is pulling our plugs out because if you remember, the first one we pulled was not looking great, and sure as heck, this one's capped just as much. How much? How much do you think that's capped? Is that one also? Yeah, this is what like is an eighth of an inch. So um, we learned something. Eighty thou? Eighty? I've never of seen an a park inch. spark look that big. Well, you know what to do. Just take this and straighten that electrode right, out. There right. you go. There, how's that look? That uh, looks pretty close. A little more, I think we'll be good. Well, we just got the bleeding the brakes. Everything up front went perfect. We were two pumps from the last bubble on the rear. We blew a line. Damn it. So now we gotta fix a hard line. Yay, my favorite flavor of torture. It's very rude of this car to have done this to yeah. us. You know, funny enough, cleaning, to get ready to bring this car in, I moved some boxes over here and forgot about them. And I was seeing that we are literally covered in like undercoat and paint. Guess what was in that box? It's all a bunch of undercoat and paint, isn't it? Oh, one of them, yeah. This is Sweet Patina's Blackout Rust Preventative. Uh, the first thing that I realized that I had that would have been useful the whole time. You're about done with the interior, right? Oh yeah, I just finished. Here's the rest of the things that we had the whole time that would have been convenient. Starting with coffee. If you guys have never heard of Sweet Patina, uh, they are a company that makes a whole bunch of cleaning and paint products. Their claim to fame is their patina sauce. But besides that, they do have a lot of other excellent products that you guys can check out on their website, such as the Happy Ending Final Detail Wipe, the Berrylicious Bubble Wash and Shine, which is the thing we should have started with, Yeah. Sticky Icky Tire Renewer, Glass Wipe. Yeah, not much of a funny name there unless you go like this. Hey, it's your day. Ass Wipe. What? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was quick. And I have a response. Get gone, degreaser. Damn. Jesse's favorite. Ooh, actually, I can still use that. Oh, superior interior, interior conditioner. This one's a so fresh and so clean, all purpose cleaner. I have used these in the past. These are their TKO hand wipes. These are awesome. They smell delicious. Allow me to demonstrate. Here, hold this. Exhibit A. Me. They're like gritty too, so they really do hold it. Yeah, no, they're not screwing around. <laughs> these, these are like Gojo in a rag. Beyond that, we have some actual polish. This is like use an orbital applicator to put that on. That one's a little more aggressive, I would imagine. And Angus's personal favorite, their Skeet Skeet freezing and penetrating lubricant, which is like a shock freeze thing. It's delicious. <laughs> Big thanks to Sweet Patina for sending these and an apology for me forgetting about them for months. But I think we have the perfect car to throw some of them on today. So, gentlemen, take your pick. Angus, I'll just hand you this one right now. Yeah. Jesse's already got the thicker white bottle. Do you want the thickest white bottle too? Oh, it's way goopier. 
I'll start with the grape flavor. All right, well, we've been uh, pizza What? We've had pizza, we've been pizza. We've done pizza? We've done pizza, I'm starting over. I have my dick in a bowl of pasta. Let's start over again. <laughs> <laughs> we have returned from some food to realize I have no quarter inch brake line at the shop. It's in the back of the F-150, which I do not have here. So we've got a couple options and I think we're only gonna limit it to about one. Proportioning valve. <laughs> Sketchy. No, 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 no. That's literally what it was designed by the manufacturer to do. So we're just going to utilize it for once and do a lap around the block. This is the worst door I've ever used. How many doors have you used today, Angus? Like three. Well, we know you can't clean them. <laughs> Listen, just because I didn't clean all the doors that I said I cleaned. All right, here we go. First test drive of the old 98. <laughs> Hey! Oh, good. Okay, you got brakes? Yep. <laughs> hey! Yeah, the rear brakes are pissing all over the ground, but whatever. That's what the fronts are for. Dude, hell yes. Oh, dude. Dude. I just, I just thought of something. What? Pull right there and do a fat burnout. You only have front brakes. me flooring it it's like broom. it's a luxurious v8 it's still a 455 with a ford barrel on it seen this much smoke since that time we revived that truck in a gym <laughs> oh my goodness we gotta get out of here Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, as you can see, I came in and have ran an all new brake line from the rear. I spliced it in right after the proportion valve up front. By the way, you can buy uh, bundles of this from Amazon. You get like four rolls and a bunch of fittings, way cheaper than anywhere else. And you can also buy this guy from Amazon. Uh, I will put some affiliate links down in the description. Check them out there. This is freaking awesome for doing really good brake flares up in here. So that being said, I'm gonna tighten all these connections. We'll refill that reservoir with brake fluid. 
Then we're almost done under the car. All right, you join me on the back tire. Got my world-renowned uh, water bottle with a hole stabbed in the top and a piece of clear tube, which is key, a piece of clear tube shoved down into it. This is to catch the fluid, obviously, and the clear tube allows me to see every last little bubble, as you will hopefully see here in a second. What I'm going to do is have Jesse press the pedal down, and then I will open the bleeder, close the bleeder, and have him let the pedal back up and do that over and over and over until it's done. Down. He will announce down when he is down. Open, closed, up. up. He'll let me know when he's up. Down. down. Up. up. As you can hear, there's bubbles in here right now. Down. down. Up. up. Down. down. Up. up. Down. down. Up. Down, down, up, up, down, down. Oh, there's a pad. We must be close. All right, there's fluid. Up, up, down, down, up. Now it's important to remember every, you know, five, ten, depending on how big your reservoir. Every few pumps, when you get a good amount of fluid flow, you need to go check your reservoir and fill it, or have someone up there watching at all times so it never runs empty. Because if it does, it will let air into your master cylinder and you will lose your bleed. I just went and checked it. It was very low. All right, down. down. Up. Up. Down. down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Up, up, down, down, up, up. All right, that went pretty well. I got a couple pumps there. I didn't see any air. Now I'm going to swap to that wheel and do the exact same thing until I see absolutely no air with like four or five good clean pumps. And then I will come back over here and do one more to make sure that no bubbles have floated up in the meantime because remember these are on the same line. They're on a T. They can get a little goofy passing air back and forth sometimes. Before I do that, however, I need to go check my fluid level again. Either way, that is how I bleed brakes underneath the car. Something we don't usually show on camera because it's a pain in the butt, but this car is big enough that I can fit the camera under it today. All right, let's finish this out. All right, so our brakes are done. We have a pedal that feels excellent. Our next step is obviously dive into the most important thing here under the hood and see if the AC works. Um. You know what, let's take a few minutes and get some butt connectors and some bits of wire and fix all the chewed up wires in here because that's something we're going to need to do. Maybe some vacuum lines as well. Okay, been a few minutes. Jesse tackled all the wiring. Anything that was frayed or broken has now been replaced throughout like the entire car. There's most of it was right here. There's one underneath, honestly. In the meantime, I went through and fixed all the vacuum lines and hooked them all back up the way they're supposed to be, like original. I was even able to hook up our HVAC, so hopefully all our blend doors and everything inside work. Let's find out. Are you ready, sir? Ready! Kind of seems like a big no to me. Okay, yep, yeah, no, that system's empty. All right, quick pause from that. I just got a call from the tire shop. They said the tires are ready to be picked up. I brought the Mustang today, so I can't really pick tires up with an 07 Mustang, but this, we could bring the whole damn tire shop back with us. So let's just take this. Time for our first real drive that's not, you know, big smoky burnouts. Oh, dude, this thing drives so nice. Oh, over the potholes like it was nothing. This is 
the epitome of luxury. We have to fix the AC. It's just so good. The second gear work. Should probably get some gas in this too, even though it says it's infinitely full. It's a GM product, they do that. They do do that. That's why I was worried about the gas tank not working, but. Well, now the car's not working. The next sentence was, <laughs> but it appears to be just fine. Let's go to that gas station right there. How about that? Where's the gas thing? In the rear. I just found it. Seriously, actually. it's behind it is. the. It's behind the license plate. It is. I have to park 19 foot beyond the gas pump to put fuel in this thing. 19.34 feet. We're taking up the entire side of this gas station. Oh, check it out. Napkins. The golf center at King's Island. Anything fun floating around back there? We still haven't vacuumed this. Oh my god. What you got? A pack of smokes. Is it actually full? It's actually full. There's a lighter and everything. <laughs> Holy cow, we've never found a full pack of smokes. That ethanol. Yes! <laughs> no, that's no accelerator pump. <laughs> All right, let's get ourselves some tires. It sounds like some so much. Thing, it sounds like we're exhaust my mustache. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should we just put four of those? There we go, first successful voyage in the Oldsmobile. Started running better and better and better, and now we can actually floor it, and it doesn't stumble or hesitate anymore, so that uh, fresh gas really helped. We also have movement on the fuel gauge. Yes, it's somewhat more down. I hope it's not that full. <laughs> it runs like really good now. Kevin, you gotta try this rear seat out. It is limo style seating. Oh, holy shit. I don't ever want to drive a car again. I want people to drive me around in this car. The most luxurious thing I've ever been in. It's like a hotel back here. Like, look at this. Feel look at all this, this stuff. real leather. I know. And look how perfect it is. Like, looks. this car looks brand new. I cannot find a single flaw in the interior of this car. Woohoo! Yeah, it's got a fancy oh, it's, hinge. it's level side to side. I, yeah, it's... It's decided. This is your car. You are my chauffeur. Shit. Would you like some grape upon? I don't know what pom pom is, but sure. I thought that was pomegranate juice. Mustard. What? Grape upon is mustard. I don't. Why don't they just call it mustard? Because Why is it gray? What's wrong with Heinz? Yellow. Mustard. America. Way it's supposed to be. Big ass car lumbering down the road with a 455. But luxuriously. People didn't sit back here drinking grape upon, Jesse, or whatever you do with it. They sat back here with stogies and big Texas hats. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, excellent job. This looks incredible. Oh, look at this. Don't worry, I brought you rubbers. Freshly mounted tires with shot blasted rims. Just on the edge, the only spot we really care to have any paint. Done by Phoenix and Nevada. Phoenix is powder coating. Who will personally pick up and deliver everything, right? That, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what the ad is, right? To an extent. <laughs> <laughs> the extent being these tires from my shop once. Yes, you know. Well, thank you very much, sir. No problem. Now we get these mounted up. Coming down to the last few things now. Jesse is masking off our tires so we can paint our rims. We had Phoenix down at Phoenix's powder coating. Do a little shot blast, get that rust off the edge. There are hubcaps, but you can see that outside ring thought what the hell why not meanwhile up front i finally got some parts from o'reilly's was able to get some adapters on there and we are going to vac this system down and hope for the best i'm not going to do this the proper way change the oil change the dryer and put new o-rings in we're just going to vac it down and throw some 134 in and see what happens <laughs> Pulled vacuum for a while, let it sit. Needles didn't move, doesn't appear to have a leak. Just kind of throwing this together at this point right now. I will go in and do this right later if it works. But if it works really good, I won't. I'll just leave it. This is an R12 system. It requires, says right here on top of the compressor, that it wants 3.75 pounds of R12. R134 is a different molecule size. We need to charge it to 80% that capacity. 
80% of 3.75 is 3, aka 4 12 ounce cans. I've got my first can screwed on here. Let's go ahead and pierce it. You go all the way down to pierce it. And then all the way to all the way down is closed, so you want to come open a little bit. And then we're going to purge. These are closed right now, so there's vacuum in these lines, pressure from the can here, but there's also air above it, so. There we go. And now we will start the car, turn the AC on, and open that low side valve. Let's do it. Here we go. It flowing in right here. Oh, I hear the compressor making noise. Come on, take it in. Take it all in. Oh, we got a cold line. This is why I didn't want to put my R12 in. I only have like five cans. You can't buy that anymore. So I'm saving that for a very special day. 60 psi and 150. I don't know what that means. You have to be getting cold air, that's freezing over. Oh! Oh, it's cool now. Oh yeah. That's it's three, working. three pounds. It's within operating range. Fourth pound, here it goes. The pressure's not screaming, that's good. Oh, that's cold. Oh yeah. Oh, dude, the 98 is going to be a driver. An old car with AC, finally, sign me up. That's it. It's full. We're seeing good pressures. We're seeing like yeah, 40 over here and 210 here. It's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's AC. It's not like freeze your balls off cold like R12 and a system that's tuned for R12 would be. They got to change stuff somewhere. This is a VIR system, a valve in receiver system is what this GM style is called. There's also POA and SVT. Give them a Google, see which one you have, you'll learn stuff. I know POA valves got to do an adjustment. SVT is no idea. This also no idea. This one's less common because no one really cares about these cars anymore, but that feels awesome. Well, there we go. We have fixed AC on a car for the first time. By which I mean refilled, likely leaking, likely not gonna work in a month, but that's next month Kevin's problem, not today's. Let's do an oil change on this thing because the oil filter looks like it's about to rust out. New filter, new oil. Got some STP for the zinc additive for that camshaft. You know, being an old flat tap it, you gotta run that. Let's get the tires on this thing. It's done. Final step, the tires are going back on. These look a lot better. Now to just cover it all with a hubcap. Yeah. What in the heck? <laughs> Never mind. What's up, Mook? Back from your trip from Minnesota? Yeah. We got a whole car and fixed it over the weekend. Feet of American luxury. That is a whole car. Whoa. <laughs> Get on in there, Mook. <laughs> I don't have many four-door vehicles. That's fair. <laughs> wow. It's squishy. Goodbye. Wow. Did you find any goodies? Yeah, we found a pack of smokes. <laughs> Did you smoke them? No. No, we saved them for you. Oh, I bet they were aged nicely. Yeah. They're worth more now. <laughs> Wait, what year is this? A 76. Bicentennial. 76? I know, right? This feels like an 86. Uh, I'm riding back here. Oh, we do have to clean the windows yet, Jesse. What's they are clean, leak? look. No, the, Mook, the AC. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed the AC. I don't think it, I don't think that's registered with you yet. It has. We have a classic. I just don't care. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you ride on the hood. Okay, there's plenty of space up there. there. It's a hell of a spray nozzle. I will say, after using this for a couple days, I am quite impressed with the sweet patina stuff. Jesse, how'd you like it for the interior? It did amazing. It did really good on leather, and where it really shined was on vinyl. Superior interior, I would say. Jesse says it performed quite well, and I can't help but agree that car looks literally brand new inside. So with that being said, big thanks to them for sending that, and if you guys want to try it yourself, they're hooking you up with a 5% off code 
for their website. Head to sweetpatina.com and use the code JYD5 at checkout for 5% off. I'll leave a link down in the description. Once again, sweetpatina.com, JYD5 for 5% off some awesome, awesome cleaning products made by some awesome car dudes. All right, let's get these windows cleaned and get the hell out of here. Does the transmission work? I have no idea. <laughs> we don't know if it was shifting, do we? No, we, we don't. Listen, that's, that's a problem for an hour from now, Kevin. He can deal with that shit. There it is. All the glass is clean. The interior is done. The vinyl's even been protected. This sucker is 100% maybe ready for the road. Jesse's taking our plates off because it's a $300 fine to run plates that are not registered to you. And I just put insurance on the car. However will we afford this, Jesse? 18 no. whole dollars for six oh, months. shit, we went over our budget. Yep, that's it. We're unrelatable. We're big, rich bastards now. You go home and pack, we'll pick you up in a bit. I'm gonna go drive this to my own home and see if it has second and third gear. She can still use some tuning, that much is for sure. We've done 1.2 whole miles. We've got tires, we've got brakes, we've got some gas in the tank, we got fresh oil. Ah, the air conditioning's fixed. The last thing left to do now is head out on the highway looking for adventure. I sure hope the transmission works. I really need third gear. Yes, yes, gaze upon me, peasants. Me and my 98 foot of glory. Oldsmobile Regency luxury. This is like if Dalton's The Jag was a real car made for real men in a real big country. Huh. Happy 13th birthday, Oliver. Okay, are we gonna shift? It's not shifting. I have just first gear. Huh, this is a problem. <laughs> We've gotta drive like 70 miles. screaming what do you possibly have to even scream up here All right, let's see the brakes a little bit whoa okay never mind they were great already Jesus I about flew out <laughs> generally being low on fluid doesn't cause one of these to uh, you know not shift into second or third generally it just doesn't go ever so I don't think it's that Okay, well, back to the shop, and we're back. Talking to a friend, thinks it's the vacuum modulator. I think he's right, since, you know, all that mouse damage and shit down there. Uh, if that modulator doesn't have any signal, no vacuum signal, it won't come out of first gear no matter what. So, let's just pull up on the curb here. Beautiful. All right, we'll swing under there, we'll get that fixed. Besides that though, holy shit, this air conditioning works. It feels so nice in here. I think I'm onto something here. I went down below and there was vacuum present in the module, the, the vacuum modulator down the trans, which is that little cup on this side that this line runs to. It was present, but it didn't sound like a ton and it didn't feel like 20 inches. And when I unplugged it up here, it was whistling and I could hear a vacuum leak, but not down there. Tried spraying some brake clean down the line. And as you can see, that comes exclusively back at us. So I think, yeah, there's some shit in here for sure. I think we're on to something here. I think that line's plugged right there. Let's get that opened up and try it again. All right, the drill bit got literal metal out of it, so. That should make a difference. Oh yeah, it doesn't like running. Let's see if I can get under there before it dies. So far to go, it's so hot. Oh yeah, now we got vacuum. Now the engine actually changes pitch when I plug or unplug the ouch, hot, 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 go on. Okay, there. that's the vacuum module right there. That's what tells your transmission how much load you got. Oh, that's hot air. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Come on, 
shift. You bastard, seriously? You have vacuum now. You have perfect vacuum now. Like I like that was wrong and now it's good and you still won't shift. Nothing. Son of a gun. Okay, well the other thing that controls upshifts is if the kickdown's stuck on. So let me stop up here at this parking lot. And I believe this kickdown's on the pedal. Let's see if we can pop that off, see if that makes a difference. Alright. Got that sucker unplugged. Let's see if that does it. If it doesn't, it's a bad modulator or a stuck valve in the trans or something. Shift, shift. Son of a gun. Ah, oh, damn it. I can't get it to manual second no matter what I do. If I had a guess, the governor's stuck or the vacuum modulator is probably bad. It's probably that one. Either way, we're already late to leave for a trip up to see the folks, and I can't get one tonight, so. I guess we need to uh, just fire and find something else to do with this car tomorrow. I will say though, despite all the transmission sadness, this thing drives incredible and the AC is awesome. I finally own a car with a working ball chiller. I've never felt so alive as when I've got cold AC blowing on my nuts. Alright, let's park this for the night, go home and deal with it tomorrow. Horn still works. Tomorrow, I've got the car up on the lift. Let's get underneath and figure out what the hell is wrong with this thing. I did some reading last night. It seems pretty consistent that it's going to be a stuck governor or a bad vacuum modulator. If I had to guess, I'm going to say stuck governor. So I guess we'll start with that. All right, so the first thing we're going to check is the governor. And the reason for that is the fact that it sounds like the word government and they don't work with the shit and can't be trusted. So I imagine this follows suit. We are on the passenger rear side of the trans. There's a cover with four bolts. Go ahead and pop those bolts out. Do have a bucket ready. You're gonna lose a little fluid. Or maybe you won't. Huh. Well, I don't know if that's what it's supposed to do or if that's technically stuck. I have, I have no idea. Let me do a little research and a little poking and prodding. Okay, so it turns out our governor comes right out of the transmission. There's a valve through this central piece. Watch right here. You'll be able to see him move if I hold it where gravity holds him down. He works just fine as far as I can tell. So if I had to guess, it's probably not this guy and we probably have ourselves a bad vacuum modulator. Let's throw this back in, get a new gasket on him, and order up a new vacuum modulator. How is this so dirty for 30,000 miles? There's very little question that the car really does have 30,000 miles. Look at that body mount bushing. It's beautiful. It looks brand new. The parts that usually go to crap all look awesome. And then the motor is extremely dirty. I need to clean this off or else it's all going to go into the trans. Now what this guy here does is tell your transmission what type of load it is seeing. More specifically, what type of load the engine is under by, you know, using vacuum, just like we do in all of our carburetor stuffs. Good way to check if these are bad, if there's fluid on the backside, they're junk. Can't really see that on this one. You just have an O-ring that needs to come out right there. Make sure he comes out when you pull them out. And there's a valve in here that we need to make sure it moves. Either way, you can get an adjustable one of those down at O'Reilly's for 16 bucks, and that will let you change your shift points. All right, so I talked to my buddy Ben, our S10 rat on Instagram, my go-to transmission guy. Turns out they sit in all the way. So if you get a pick or a magnet, sure enough, that thing moves just fine. So that ain't the problem. I think we had ourselves a bad modulator. I hope. If it's not that, I'm running out of ideas. The only other thing I could think of is somehow when we hooked wires back up, we got one wrong. And we're putting a constant 12 volts to the kick down. So if this all fails, I'll unplug that. Mook has delivered the new modulator. As you can see, this little guy right here in the middle is the adjustment. It'll give you a little bit of adjustment on your shift points, like I stated before. Uh, we know that valve moves. Yeah. We know this is now good. And unfortunately, I threw the vacuum tester on the old one, and we know the old one's still good. This moves at the exact same shift points that one moved, so... I don't know what's going on here, but that's like, you know, 16 bucks, like I said, so... We'll just plumb that up, because that's easy enough. Only thing I haven't tried is unplugging 
the kick down from the trans over here in case we accidentally wired that to 12 volts. That's pretty much all that could be left now. That or extreme internal failure. I don't know. All right, we've got a new modulator. I unplugged the 12 volt into the side. We know the governor works. Let's drop this on the ground, make sure the trans fluid's topped off and go for another test drive. Maybe the accelerator does work a little. Are we gonna die? What are we doing with the windows down? Riding in luxury. Oh yeah. Get you some of this. This is our power to a rig next year. I'm down. All right, come on. Oh, it did it, it shifted. You've done it, Kevin! Third, yes, okay. Something we did fixed it. I don't know what. Let me find a curb to pull up on. I'll run underneath and plug that 12 volt signal wire back in. And if it still shifts after that, then I really don't know what the difference was and it's truly fixed. Oop. Hello? All right. Back in a sec. Okay. Kick down wires back on. Let's see if it shifts. I'm still unplugged at the pedal. That's what it is. Yep, it's not shifting again. All right, well, now all I gotta do is figure out where we're getting 12 volts injected into that system all the time, and it'll be fixed. Back to the shop. All right, I figured it out. When I started wiring that one, I was underneath the car, and I was like, oh, hey, that uh, black and orange wire down there looks like it connects to this wire hanging down. It does not. It connects to that little stub right there, which is also black and orange. So that needs to go to that. We've got it hooked up to whatever the hell that's supposed to power. Which I haven't figured out where he's supposed to go yet, but must not be that important. Let's get that connected properly, and this thing will be done. Oh, by the way, if anyone has a fender and these guys right here, please let me know. If I had to guess, no one makes those, and everything else is gonna be like impossible to find. So if you have any of that sitting in a garage or on a scrap car out back or something, please let me know, junkyarddigs1 at gmail.com. With all that being said, this sucker's done and ready for the road, so let's put it on the road and go for a drive. All we have to do is figure out where to. Actually, you know what? I completely forgot, but it's my birthday tomorrow. I'm turning 27. I should probably go up and see my folks. A little bonus content, I suppose. I swung out to Tom's to show him the car, and uh, he said we could fix that door, or at least make the fender better. Is it even moving? It did. It moved. <laughs> oh, Tom, you scratched my dent. I did. Still hitting. Yeah, that one top piece. Look at that. We can work without some more yet. Oh my gosh, that is nice. Except for now it's way over there. It's fixed. Now if only I couldn't see that little bubble in the fender, I'd, it, I'd, it'd literally be perfect forever. What's up, Mook? I don't know. It's hot as balls, that's what. The humidity is It's horrible out here. Either way, it is time for a road trip in the old. We've been driving this thing around since yesterday when I finished it, took it to breakfast, took it to my cousin's place last night. We probably got about 50, 60 miles on it and it's been doing great. So we're gonna throw a little more fresh gas in it and then hit the road 70 miles north to my folks' house. Goodbye house. Hello road. Ready for a road trip? Yeah. High five. It is so hot. Yes. Yes, the cold. Oh, we are going to be putting this system to the test today. All right, we're on the road. Turns out we've already done almost 80 miles. We're at 39,364. Northbound, right, Moop? Yeah. Let's do it. Our gas gauge does appear to have started working. But now it's like half old fuel, half new fuel. So now it'll be like quarter and three quarters. What are you, what's your face about? We have to turn the AC off. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I share that feeling. There we go. 21 gallons. What? This is either a way, way bigger tank than I thought, or half actually means totally empty. <laughs> it just keeps going. Holy crap. Well, 
Well, we got fuel now, Mook. All right, an hour north. Let's go. Oh no, Mook. A natural sworn enemy to the Oldsmobile. A big turn. Again. <laughs> Luke, I just realized something. What? I forgot to bring tools. All I have is my pliers. You pish! Also, we're still running the original fuel pump. You know how those go. They either last forever or they die in about a hundred miles every time, which is usually what happens. Is your Oldsmobile still running the original pump? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's an Oldsmobile thing. It's like 3,000 miles, 4,000 miles, right? Yeah. Well. Yeah, just under 4,000. Damn, okay. Well, we're only going like 150, so we should be okay, right? Let me do the math. 150. Yeah, that's less than 4,000. Okay, we're set. Gotta turn the AC down. It was getting a little cold. Yeah, a little chilly in here. <laughs> that's impressive. Onward. Passing the uh, Roland McCallsburg exit now. We've got about yeah, a billion miles left. Keep her going. Man, this reminds me all too much of one of my favorite road trips we've ever made, which is heading down to Texas with Dalton uh, about a month and a half ago now. You guys can check that whole series out on the channel. It was hilarious. Either way, it was 75, 85 mile an hour down the interstate in a 76 GM big body car that sat for a long time. This one has air conditioning, a radio, and a MOOC. Hi! And four doors with a lot more room back there. So this would have been vastly superior, but still getting those same vibes. What do you think, Boop? That was my favorite road trip, too. Because I was gone for yeah. two weeks. Yeah! What? <laughs> <laughs> you think I Ah, oh, yes. North Iowa. One of my favorite places in the summer. Just flowing oceans of green. And we are in the ultimate ship cruising across them, the Oldsmobile boat. I mean, it's no wonder they put so many big block Olds in jet boats. I mean, they were basically a marine motor. They came in a boat. With the exception of the vibration from the unbalanced tires, I didn't have time to get a balance for the trip. Uh, this thing is doing incredible and in just hauling ass down the road with no effort. The, the gas gauge hasn't even moved. Holy shit, Mook, we're already at our exit. Oh my god! <laughs> I thought we still had like 20 minutes left. We have been mistakenly doing like 80 down the interstate, so it just it just drives so good. I love this car. This new permanent road trip car. Yeah! Alright, well, a little bit of back roads and we'll be at my folks' house. <laughs> More curves, Luke. every video but this might actually be our best car and I think I say that too but seriously this one's fantastic love all the old barns in North Iowa hey Mook no <laughs> there we are 80 miles later we approach the last turn and onto some gravel and there's the gravel good job you old girl good job you too Mook I'm gonna be in disguise so that your parents start recognizing me <laughs> Mook, we've made it! The Oldsmobile has pulled it off. A trip back to North Iowa from which it came. Another Oldsmobile. Now we rip a fat donut in the yard. No. <laughs> There's his Oldsmobile Cutlass. Oh yeah, yeah, it's here not, too. Not mine. Everyone thinks that I have his Cutlass. I do not. Oh, beep, bop, boop. Have you ever driven a car before? Oh, heck off. <laughs> Jesse's working on the Galaxy. <laughs> He's trying to vacuum you, you just brought a whole bunch of dust. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Why? <laughs> 800 bucks. The best highway car I've ever, ever driven. You're an Oldsmobile man, you should be able to appreciate this. This is a glorified Cadillac. Oh, yeah, it literally is, actually. 
C body. The only cars on this chassis were a Buick Electra, this, and all the Cadillacs. Glorified Cadillac or off brand Cadillac? I think it's an unglorified Cadillac. It's the same as a Cadillac. Look, I mean, the fender skirts are bigger than most fenders on cars today. It makes me wonder why they call them fender skirts when they're on quarter panels. You have to admit, though, pretty clean car. It's a clean car. What is here? Uh, 76. Which is hard to believe because this looks like an 83. It smells like mothballs. It is a 455, by the way, if that makes anything better. It probably makes less horsepower than any 350 we own, but such is life. Find a fender. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of Junkyard Digs. I hope you guys enjoyed. hope you maybe learned something. I know I sure learned that these are pretty damn good cars. This thing is great. I can't wait to do a bunch of road trips in it. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you to Jesse. Thank you to Angus. Thank you to Moog. Thank you to everyone that helped us in this episode. We will see you right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Stay greasy out there. Peace.